This is the Action Movie Guys podcast, bringing you action movie reviews from across the decades, plus box office numbers and insight like never before. And now, your hosts of the Action Movie Guys podcast, Alex and Nate. What's up, everyone? Welcome to a very special episode. This is episode number 300 of the Action Movie Guys podcast. I am your host, Nate, and this is my co-host, Alex Figueroa. And for our 300th episode, we just so happen to be joined by a very special guest, a patron, a guest on the live show, my best friend, my movie (laughs) partner, Beckish. (laughs) Say hello to everybody, (laughs) Beckish. (laughs) <laughs> hello my fellow patron have you ever been like introduced in such a spectacular fashion yeah not a spectacular fashion as yeah, that I, I have to thank you for it i really am going to remember that for the so rest for of this, my life 300th episode. 300th episode and for this one we are the action movie people because we do have a lady on the show so we're yeah. the action the action movie humans <laughs> <laughs> we're the, uh, no we're the action movie guys featuring beckish and we're going to be covering a little movie from 2010 now this is continuing on with our heist films so there's a movie called the town of course directed by ben affleck his second movie that he directed after gone baby gone an incredible cast we got ben affleck we got john ham blake lively rebecca hall jeremy renner i mean you got a lot of people in this movie and um we're gonna be covering it but before we do you already know i gotta give you guys some rotten tomato scores alex did you have financials for this one I can pull it up. Do your he's gonna pull up the financials for this one but let me go ahead and give you these numbers you guys are gonna be impressed i think they're pretty good. Let's start with the audience first. The audience, an 85%. So mm. 85% of people who watch this movie said, go see it. Critic score, 92%. Jeez. So we are talking about a top shelf film here. But are we? Because uh, maybe we disagree. Maybe we agree. Alex, what do you think of those Rotten Tomato scores, having watched it? <laughs> I mean, if the, if the critics is that high, <laughs> like a 90, and then the audience is close to a 90... You know, you're watching some serious shit. <laughs> That's what you're watching. You're watching a great movie unfold. Yeah. Beckish, would you agree with these scores without giving your scores or anything? Yes, I would have to agree. Unlike other movies that I've seen on Rotten Tomatoes, this is definitely where it should Unlike be. other ones that have 90 and then they're garbage. Yeah, this shit. may yeah. be not one of those. We don't know. Alex, what do we got as far as financials? Well, my good friend, financially, this movie was budgeted <laughs> at $37 million. Oh, Which is hit. freaking crazy. <laughs> then it was a hit, whatever it well, made. Well, worldwide, I'm a little shocked. 154 million. That's pretty good. I mean, that's, no, it's great, but I thought it would be in times the, the 300, maybe. Mm, no, because you got to think, it is a, it's kind of a drama. It is a heist action drama, right? Okay. Like a crime drama. And also, you had Ben Affleck, who we got to remember when this movie came out, he, his star was not what it would become. Remember, Ben Affleck was like a joke for a little bit there. Remember, like, Paycheck, That's and he's doing all these movies. People were like, Ben Affleck. He wasn't yeah, Batman. Yeah, that guy's like a goober. And yeah. then he directed this, and then this, I think, relaunched him. So the box office is actually pretty good, especially because the, the budget was so low. Yeah, and he wrote this movie, too. Wrote and He had directed. writing credit for this movie. So he directed and wrote with two other people. So, so this is his one of his babies. I know it's adapted from a novel. Let's just go ahead and get right into it. Now, this is going to be an interesting one for lead character and villains, but I got an idea of where we're going to go. The lead character is, of course, Ben Affleck's character. I don't have the names pulled up. What's his I'll, name in this movie? I'll pull it up. Uh, talk, he is Doug McRae. That's right, Doug. And I literally just watched yeah. this. Doug, he is our lead character, even though he is a bank robber. Alex, yeah. what did you think? Oh, I loved him in the movie. See, I, so he's Boston. I don't see, my thing is so confusing with Ben Affleck because I, I know, wasn't he, he's actually from Boston. He's from Boston. Right? Yeah. But he never, when you see him do like actual interviews, he doesn't have like that Boston accent no. like this movie. I felt like he was I don't know when it comes to this movie. I don't feel like that was natural Boston accent. Like he didn't sound like a, a like a like if it was his natural language. You know what I mean? Like someone that that is British, but they go American. You could tell the difference yeah. from that. This one. I don't know. I, I can't say that he I mean, I don't know. It's just weird. I, I like the character. I, I like the heist character. I thought he was really good. He manipulated the chick and then he fell in love with the chick. And then how he I mean, he was a really nice guy. He didn't kill us. I mean, he didn't try to kill people at all. <laughs> Like, it it's really like Jimmy to. Ratner was the yeah. one that was like killing everybody. This dude was just straight raw dog. I don't know. I felt like I liked the character. He reminded me a little bit of a character that would be in Heat, the, the, mm-hmm. that type of world of Heat with Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. Like, I feel like he would have been in Robert De Niro's section with Val Kimler. Like, I felt like that character was like that. Actually, his character also could be in Training Day. 
Like it, it, it felt very, very, very raw for the film. Like I liked it a lot. Yeah, I gave him a five. I liked him a lot. I think he was. A, I mean, he is a great leading man. I, I know not many people like him, and it took a lot. But I liked him like Batman. I mean, yeah. Batman came six years later, and you can see why he's. I mean, he won an Oscar for this movie, right? Or Argo? Mm, no, Argo. he win. No, no, this he one he got nominated. Nominated, he was nominated he got for acting. Argo. Yeah. Yeah, so it travesty. He it won Best Picture, but he didn't win Best Director. He, no, he wasn't nominated for Best Director. That was the whole controversy. Like, how oh. can it win Best Picture and you didn't even the disrespect? They disrespect. Mm. All right, well, I give him a five. We give a five for Doug Beckish. What did you think about Doug? I like Doug. I feel like he would have invited me to his barbecue <laughs> if, um, that we would have become good friends. Um, no, he did. He did really well. I think he emulated a lot of his character in Good Will Hunting. I feel like it was the same same guy just put in a different movie. Up. I like his Boston accent and I like how he he just kind of is invested in the entire movie. So I, I I give him a five because of his directing ability. The fact that he had so much to do with how this movie came out and the and it just phenomenal. I think he did a great job. Yeah, well, you know what? The train ain't gonna stop here because I gave him a five as well. I thought he was. Yay! Yeah, I thought he was great. <laughs> you know, it's a character that feels like a something you'd see in like a seventies film like a 70s crime type movie, mm. you know, that gritty, uh, mm. it just has that feel to it, even though it is modern. And you know why I gave him a five though? Because he has layers. Like you said, Alex, he mm -hmm. is a bad guy. Technically he robs banks. He does crimes. He, you know, he probably did shoot some of them people. It's hard to tell at certain parts, but I'm sure he did, but he does want to get out. And they give him backstory, you know, the whole thing with his mother and how that affected mm -hmm. him. His dad is in jail, how he was with the sister, but, you know, he doesn't. But that's his best friend. He's loyal, but he also wants to leave. And that is how you make an interesting, well-rounded character. And so I really enjoyed mm -hmm. him. I do think his acting was really good in this. I don't love... I don't love early Ben Affleck. Like He was good in some stuff. He was always a little corny. I feel like this movie is where he turned the corner to become like a serious actor. Like, okay. He had just broken up with J-Lo. Maybe. Maybe J-Lo was, J -Lo was <laughs> making him a nerd. And now he... Put that together now. He got good. sad and he became a serious dramatic actor. Uh, because <laughs> after this, he had like a string of, you know, this, Batman, Gone Girl, like where he was putting in oh. really good uh, Argo, really good performances. So... I gave him a five. I think Doug is a very well-written, complex character who is bad, but doesn't want to be and wants to leave the life. And so, you know, I enjoyed it. Okay, now villains. So what I decided for the villains is the rest of the group because Jeremy oh, Renner, okay. his boys, they are really, they don't have some of those redeeming factors. So we'll go with them as the villains. Beckish, what did you think? With them as the villains, I think the brother, his bestie, Jim, yeah, Jim, Jim. Um, Jeremy Renner, James. he, Eagle Eye, he, even, even he was calm in some points and they, he still terrified the crap out of me. Like, I don't want to cross this guy. He's like two feet shorter than Ben Affleck, but I'm still afraid of him. You know, yeah. like <laughs> he did a good job with being able to scare the crap out of me. And even the calm moment where they just went to beat up the guys in the apartment. He goes, hey, what'd you do to my brother? Look at my face. It's like, I don't want to look at your face. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, he did a really good job. Five, five all the way. Five. All right, Alex. Ben Affleck won for best director for Argo Golden Globe. Golden Globe. Okay, that, yeah. yeah, and he didn't even get nominated for the Oscar. That's why it was a travesty. Yeah, that's horrible. But okay, in terms of the bad guys, I gave them a five. Jeremy R James, his name is James. Yeah. That's his character's name. Like Cough um, Coughlin or something. Coughlin, yeah, some weird anyway Irish I agree with Becklish. That scene in the apartment when he beats the crap out of them and he shoots the guy in the leg, he was a loose cannon. And I think he 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 played that character very well. Because honestly, the well, his family is what destroyed the entire film because Blake Lively is the one that told the cops where they were going to be. Jeremy Renner, loose cannon. I think he was great. Everybody else in the, around the group didn't have much shine because the main two characters of the film was really Ben Affleck and James, what's his, Jeremy Ratner's character. Yeah. In terms of the group, it was them two talking much. The other guys was just like pawns. They were just there to be a, a group of four I'm doing the heist movie. So like, I didn't go all crazy giving them all a score because I think... Jeremy Ratner carried that entire group in terms of the villains. They could have went away scot-free, but he wanted to continue going. And then you had the Irish dudes in the pub, right? Like, those yeah. dudes was like, you know what? If you don't Fergie. do what I want you to do, it's going to be some hell to pay. And I was yeah. just like, man, I hope he kills you. Because I was like, Fergie. you deserve it. 
Like, <laughs> yeah. So honestly, I, I gave him a five. Yeah, I forgot. Even even if, especially if we factor in Fergie because he's also a villain. He killed his mom. He turns out he's the one who got his mom committed suicide. <laughs> Because mm-hmm. of this guy. Mm-hmm. So he'd been there ruining his life his whole life, pulling the strings. Really, we could have put him as a villain. I still would have gave it. I also gave it a five. I just think Jeremy Renner. It's so funny, Beck, as you said something that it's true. And it's the thing of like, I don't think of Jeremy Renner as an intimidating person, even like off camera or in other movies. He's always kind of nice and, you know, he could do action, but but he was like scary in this movie, which means his performance was great. I love the scene right before they go beat him up when Ben Affleck's like, I need you to come with me. You can't ask me what we're doing. Yes. I were never going to talk about it again. And we're going to hurt some people. And he's like, whose car are we taking? I love it. It is right. such a good, like just the dialogue. I was like, oh, it's so it's written so good and i got hyped i knew they were gonna go bust these dudes up yeah jeremy mm. renner's great and ben affleck you know uh, jeremy renner was putting some pressure on him, like you ain't leaving bro like you're never leaving you are staying here he's like no i'm leaving he's like no you're not and then they fight and you could tell at the end he was ready to let him go because remember he's like i'll see you later and he's like i'll, I'll see you when you come back because yeah. he was like i know you're leaving mm-hmm. and whatever and then the whole part of when he gets shot and ben affleck's right there i thought it was all fantastic i want to yeah. save some of that for storyline but yeah i gave him a five and Fergie, the the freaking guy with the flowers. Oh my God, Pete Postlewaite. That's the actor. He's great. It's a small role, but yes. he is like quiet, scary. Mm, yes, way. you know what I mean. So yeah, I give him a five. I give him a five. I think. And and if you want to count like the cop, the FBI character. I mean, the reason I didn't count them as anything is they're they're sort of background. They help, but they do help the story. But yeah, they're not like along. main characters. So mm-hmm. I didn't even factor them in really. So five across the board for both. All right. Oh, we're gonna get controversial here. I know it. Okay, action scenes. Alex, what did you think? Oh, I was torn with this one. <laughs> In terms of action, I was so torn because, yeah, you do have the the Boston shootout at the stadium. Fair you way. do have the bank heist stuff. But then it's all talking. <laughs> it's all story developing. After the bank heist in the beginning, it's all him meeting the girl in the laundry. And then they go from there. And then they do the other stuff. So with that said, I'm going to go with my gut with this one. And I'm going to give it a five. Because honestly, I I think the shootout in Boston, I thought the shootout in Boston is good. And then the, the car chasing through that little narrow streets, yeah, which I was like, man, Ben Affleck, that. all I needed yes. you to do is just stretch the camera a little bit back to give me more real estate to see what's going on because it was too close. Well, you could tell because of the narrow streets, I guess they couldn't put the cameras in there much. Yeah, but it's tough. yeah, it is tough to shoot. But if if Mission Impossible could do it, unless they did like overheads or something like that, yeah, mm-hmm. I think it could have worked. But yeah. I, I, other than that, I mean, not saying it was bad, but I think the car chase scene between that and then the shootout at at, at, uh, at um Boston Red Sox Stadium. Anyway. I was just like, holy crap. I'm like, and then Jeremy Ratner shooting the cops, you know, which this is my only beef because I was going to lower it because of this one scene. <laughs> John Hamm is behind him going, hey, James, right? Turn around. And I'm like, hmm. I was like, all right. He has a shotgun. So I was like, it is what it is. He turns around and he sprays like 50 bullets and he does not this even hit him once. Them. Yeah, I said, get <laughs> the fuck out of here. I was like, and then he's crawling, <laughs> chasing him around the floor, the car, around the car. Him. He could have hit him. I said, get. I was like, no. And I was like, I was about to deduct points because this is not even cool. Then when the truck decides to bust through the door, right? And my man has a shotgun. He pinpoint accurate shoots the damn thing from a distance and pops a tire. I was like, get the hell out of here. But he missed Jeremy things, Renner too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're like this close. He misses it. But a, 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 a runaway van, he shoots it from like a distance of 100 feet and it blows a tire out. Say, yeah. dude, you're not selling me on that. But <laughs> it is what point. it is. Pretty good I, I know, I know you're going to give it a four, but I'm going to give it a five. <laughs> I'm going to give it a five because yeah. I, I love the way, I think it sets up the movie great in terms of the shootouts. All right, Beckish. Now you watch the extended cut we found out oh, later. Yeah. So yours probably had even a little less action because I know it's like 30 extra minutes of story. Yes. So how did the action play for you? So for me, I, I'm going to give you my score and then I'll tell you yeah. why uh, I, I'm going with a four. And the reason why is because I'm watching an action movie I want to see more of what's going to happen next. There are three stories going on at the same time simultaneously. You you have Ben Affleck with his boys and he's got to, you know, meet these commitments and he's got the mafia guy that you're right. He had a simple role, but it was still impactful for the little bit that he did. You've got the love story with the girl going on, which I think she was just way too ditzy. Like dude has a tattoo on the back of his neck. You know, these guys are coming out of nowhere now and they 
they sound just like they did in the bank. So that was, so I had to knock off points for that. And then he's got his personal life where he's trying to figure out what happened to his mom and he's got his dad in jail. So all those stories being followed, good job keeping them all together, knitted together uh, for, for me only because it wasn't a whole lot of action because yeah, I guess I did see the yeah. extended cut. That's true. Mm. Well, I gave it a four with the regular cut, but you already know why. I, I agree with Alex though. And, and you, this is a story driven movie. We can't, and there's yeah. no reason to, it's a story driven movie with action more than anything. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. Alex, this reminded me of Den of Thieves last week, which I also gave a four to. It's yeah. similar, right? Like you got a lot of story. The heist scene is great. The the first one is good, but like you know, you get a little shooting and then they drive away. The second heist scene with the nuns when they're wearing the nun mask, that one's a little more fun. That's the one with the car chase and all that. That was so good. It was fun, you know, driving. But I agree, some of the camera, you know, usually if a director doesn't do their own action, maybe the second unit guy does it. I don't know who the second unit guy was, but I agree. Some of the shots were it wasn't the best the best car chase scene i've ever Mm -hmm. seen it was pretty standard but it was there at least it was diverse and then you have the big one at the end now i love the fenway scene but i agree with you alex like the when jeremy renner turns around and shoots 47 bullets and doesn't hit him once i was like Mm -hmm. i don't remember that like individual scene and i was like how how do you miss how not only that they're in the (laughs) middle of the street and he he jumped like 10 feet behind a car didn't hit him once Mm -hmm. so that was a little annoying and the part where he's following him there ain't no way that guy could crawl so fast and you're walking and you could run if you want you're spraying a machine gun at him yeah Yeah, and he's still getting away from you and then the fact is is that he's going (laughs) on the same direction that he's crawling I'm like any robber is gonna go go the the opposite way way and shoot him and and he's dead yeah it just and Ben Affleck was crossing the street seeing him doing this I was like he could have just shot him in the leg from a distance right. with the pistol that he had. So yeah, it, so it was that just part, a little. But but the overall shootout there, I did like because Jeremy Renner yeah. was like he went out like a gangster. He didn't. He yeah. wasn't giving up. He was like, all right. I'm gonna put my guns down. He just got up and kept shooting. So I did like it. <laughs> he overall. drank the soda the from the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because he got shit on the ass. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It came, yeah, it fell out of the garbage <laughs> yeah. or something. Yeah, he, just he picked drinking. up a soda. He was thirsty. Oh, yeah, yeah, I like that part. That's a little character thing. Like, that's good. Like, yeah, yeah. this guy probably thirsty. Yeah. And I do love the Fenway scene, though. I think that scene, like, the heist yeah. is so well executed. But it's not enough for me to give it a five. So I gave it a four. But I understand your score. Begish, I understand your score. All right. Storyline. I guess you get to go for, for me, the storyline, I'll give it a five. Because, again, you have so many things that are going on and you're tying them together so beautifully to be able to relate to these characters now you're rooting for the bad guy you want him to win you want him to kill the mafia guy you want him to get out of this life and you want him to get away with the money so that he can get the girl at the end um so for storyline i'm definitely going to give it a five not too complicated easy to follow and it i I was sold i was entertained thoroughly when it comes to storyline so i was torn with this one i was torn with the four and the five and and here's why before i give my actual score so the blake lively's character which she was gorgeous in this movie yeah. which i was like dude why didn't you go with this one over the other one i don't get it but i'll say this is what it is yeah. but he's a crackhead <laughs> it's right i mean he had That's millions fine. of dollars to get her off the crack <laughs> he could have got it off but anyway <laughs> my thing was when she, john ham at the end was just like i need you to help me whatever and she goes oh i heard whatever and i was just like but he she didn't know what was going on she didn't know the detail at all like at all where it was going down i'm like so how did he know it was fenway park that was my only problem with the movie because these guys don't let no one know what is going to happen and if it was coming from the irishman like this plan how did blake lively's character knew that they were going to hit up wrigley field like that i was like wait i was like she didn't even give no detail at all whereas it was she just said oh one more job and then he's out and i was just like okay cool and then all of a sudden you had thousands of cops surrounding the ballpark i was like who who really got this information out because it could have been from her because she didn't know shit she was just a i mean she could have though because i feel like they were all just a family like they probably just talking like she could be walking by they're not gonna stop they live in, yeah, the, same live in the same house it could have just been like she could have just heard fenway and know nothing else about it so i don't know i mean because the, yeah. the plan for the last thing was at the irish pub when he whipped out all the maps and he said this is where we're gonna do it this is where we're gonna go this is where we're gonna do whatever so like anyway for me that was yeah. just a little uh but Everything else, I thought it was really entertaining. Like, I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I thought, I love the scene that 
he was just like, okay, I got the girl's uh, uh, ID. And he was just like, I'm going to go follow her and see whatever. And this dude was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> he was just like, I can't have you killing somebody for no damn reason. But I like how they grew up with the relationship. And you kind of knew they were not going to have that at the end. There was no way that was going to happen. But I love that he left the money and she donated the money for his mom. I think it was the mom's yeah. name, right? The On the rink. ice rink. Yeah. yeah, so I thought that was yes. really, uh, really cool. And I don't know. I thought as a whole package, I thought the movie was told very well. I, I thought it was very well. And, and I liked it a lot. It, I think it's top-notch bank heist. Has to be top five for anybody when it comes to bank heist. So I gave it a five when yeah. it comes when it comes to that. So yeah. Yeah, I wasn't torn five. I gave it a five. I love mm. it. I love this movie. I think it's extremely well written. I think the characters are well written. I like all of them. Even John Hamm. I like, I like John Hamm in this movie. I think he's he's fun to watch. He adds a little bit of humor. You know what I mean? Because he's just like, he's the FBI guy who's trying to get him. I do remember one thing is in the extended scene, Beck, as you could confirm, the interrogation scenes are a little longer and there's like a little funny, right? When they're picked up at the jail. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and they're like talking to the microphone. Mm -hmm. And I remember Ben Affleck does something like funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All of that's not yeah. in the regular cut. Mm. It's like much shorter. It's just the fat guy reading the <laughs> reading the that paper. That was funny. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. <laughs> yes. In the regular, yeah. in the extended version, like Jeremy Renner has more part and Ben Affleck has more so I remember that they, there's a little bit of humor, but I think this movie is very well paced. Yeah. It's two hours, but honestly, it flies by like it, it moves along. The characters are good. Unlike the last movie we did, the love story here at least is interesting. You know what I mean? Like that's a weird scenario. Like you kidnapped this lady, took her to a beach, did all this stuff. You go to return her yeah, license. Yes. And then he has this guilt of like he sees her breaking down. And he's like, let's go get a drink. And then uh, he just falls in love with her because sometimes that happens in life. You know, like you, you hang around somebody and then that can happen. So I just think it fires on all cylinders. All the characters are well written. In. The storyline is good. I agree, Alex. This is one of my favorite heist movies. I think it is. It has a little bit of everything. It's got drama. It's got action. It's got a fun heist. And I think it's. I think it's like a perfect storyline for this film. All right. Uh, overall, Alex, what do you got? A five. I think this is a perfect heist movie. I mean, coming from Den and Thieves. Mm -hmm. And then this one, I think we hit two back-to-back -back gold mine because I mean we had Uncle Jerry in, in the town. I think it would have been a hit also. I mean, there it would have been awesome. What if it, Uncle it, Jerry was the FBI agent? Oh, John it would have been, dude, I would have been like an Oscar <laughs> performance. He should have got it. My man <laughs> Gerard Butler. I would have been all up in it. <laughs> Uncle Jerry. Yeah. Uncle Jerry. No, but I think in overall, I think the music was awesome because they cut off the music and it was so ambient noise everywhere. And the shootout, like I like that. Like the whole shootout in Fenway, it had no music. It was just straight straight gunfiring and I was like I like that when they just just take away the music and you feel like you're there the yeah. popping of um, I mean the surround sound of mine so I heard all the, the popping from everywhere yeah, yeah the popping of the guns so I, I liked all that stuff and then the music got up and, and all that I thought the characters were all great I liked them and yeah Jer Jeremy Radner's character I love oh dude the scene oh the scene is when he's having lunch with her and oh. he came and sat down and yes. that shit was so tense I loved yeah, it for real that what was mad do? tense oh. yeah, yeah. Like, oh, you bring your home work with you you know huh? sometimes he brings his home uh, his work home with him that's what he says he's like hey so what do you do she's like oh i work in the bank the one that got that robbed yeah he went oh really yeah how was that that must have been pretty crazy huh yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah and i was just like man something and i felt like the whole time i'm going is he just gonna shoot her in the face in front of everybody because i mean he looked like the type of right. actor i mean uh, uh, the character i thought he was just gonna just wail off but i love when he got up and he hugged him and held his tattoo oh like, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. He He's like, all right, catch you later. And then they had that brotherly argument in the oh, I thought it was uh, that scene right there. I was like, man, that that is very tense. <laughs> Yes, for sure. Yeah, because he did not know which way he was gonna go. Because the scene after that, he was just wailing and and oh, and then the, again when the when she hit the silent alarm and he beat the crap out of the old guy that created yeah, the, the guy Titanic. From Alias. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. I call him the guy who created the Titanic. So in the extended <laughs> cut, I think they show him again. <laughs> in the extended cut, they show him again. I think he's like blind or something from that. He's in the hospital. They go to the hospital to visit him, Ben Affleck and the girl. And oh. turns out he's like blind yes. in one eye. So it like affects. There's a lot. Mm -hmm. The extended cut's actually good. I wish they put it on the 4K. 
Because yeah. it, it adds even more layers to it. No, that sucks. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, I give it a five overall. Bankish, what do you got? Uh, you know, I, I, I'll I give it a five. I was I was debating between the four and the five. Alex sold me on it because it's true. You, you get to that very last scene where Jeremy is just on the street. He picks up a random soda from the street and you kind of feel his like exhaustion of, okay, this is my last call. The Where they shot him. I mean, he got shot oh, in the face yeah. and his jaw was all yeah, jacked up cheap. and went, I mean, it just, it kind of just brought it all home for me. I, I, it was, it was beautifully shot. So aside from like, you know, the ditziness of the girlfriend and like, it, there was just too many obvious moments for her uh, not to know anything up until how late she found everything out. So aside from that, uh, I'll still give it a five. It was a great you movie. You know what? I agree with that. Now that you're saying it, I, I still like, I like the, the, the love story. But her mm. character is probably the weakest character. I, I now that I'm really thinking, she's kind of dumb. Like, there's a lot of moments where she could have put two and two together. Oh Maybe yeah, she was the necklace, getting the yeah. necklace. Like all these things are tying and in. And then she's so and mad at him, never wants to talk to him again. But then still like helps him escape at the end. Like my sunny days or whatever. It's like, oh okay. Are you sure? um, so yeah. Right. Even still, I give it a five. I love this film. I think it is fantastic. Hey. I think I've always liked it. I remember I saw I saw it at the theater. Loved it. I don't watch. I don't re watch mm-hmm. movies that often you know because i have to watch so many but every time i watch this movie i really enjoy it i have seen the extended cut watching this i was remembering parts and i was like where is that part and i had the opposite experience of beckish who had never seen it and was okay. like what is this i don't remember it i was like where's that yeah. scene and it's because i have seen the extended so i think both versions mm-hmm. are great now just so you guys know yeah. if you're listening at home there is three versions of this movie there is three the, there's the theatrical there is the director's cut and then there's one called the extended cut now the extended cut's only mm-hmm. about three minutes longer but it has a different ending and it has the ending that's from the book and all i'll say is is totally different than the ending here so i don't know if you're interested in it or if you've seen the director's cut just look up the ending of the extended cut because the rest of the movie is pr- pretty much the same that's um, interesting yeah that, it has a different know. result for ben affleck's character Oh, so, he gets shot up. <laughs> he gets shot up. Yeah, he dies. Uh, yeah, so. I kind of figured because I, I was like, the way guys, I was going to ask, who, but I didn't want to spoil and Jeremy Renner beat up, come they back come and back. shoot him. I kind of figured because the the way they they shot him in the in the bus oh. suit going away, it looked like yeah. he got drove by and they shot him up or something. Yeah, he's like wearing that. an out like a work outfit. He comes out and they're like, "Hey, what's in your bag?" And he's like, "Dude, I don't got no money because he gave it to the girl and everything." But he stays in. Ball- he doesn't go to Florida and they come back and shoot him so that's that's how that one and then he's like looking up at the sky and whatever so a little bit more mm. of a downer ending but life of crime yeah, still a good yeah, one life yeah. of crime yeah. alright so what is your total uh, what is your total points Alex oh mine's is a perfect 25 out of 25 I think this is a perfect heist movie mm-hmm. now I'm, I'm not saying as an overall movie is it perfect I'm not saying it is but I think as a heist movie I think it's a, one of the perfect heist movies put well put together shot and wrote and everything fantastic and Bex I think we got the same 24 out of a 25 again right yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah all right so a great film i think we can all agree on that uh if you haven't seen the town i know obviously here we talk some spoilers but that's okay still worth your watch trust me you Do will it. enjoy it and it's definitely worth seeing next week we got two more movies we are moving along with the planet of the apes it's only a three movie franchise so we're going to be doing dawn of the planet of the apes and then Alex, we oh. wrap up our heist month with we're going out west for this. We were in Boston for this mm. one. We were in where where was Den of Thieves? California, it was right? California. And yeah. Now we're going out to like the deserts. I think it's in Texas or something. We're going for hell or high water. I've never little seen Chris that. Pine, no. Little Jeff Bridges, nope. hmm? like Jeff nope. Bridges. <laughs> He's made of whiskey. So we're gonna be doing a little hell or high water. <laughs> He's made of whiskey. To wrap up our heist movie month. Beckish, thank you for coming. Fantastic yes. job. Yes. Amazing. It has been a dream come true. <laughs> Huge fan. All right, guys. If you guys want to follow us on our social media accounts, please follow Nate over on Instagram at Netflix Reviews. Check out the podcast with him and his friends called Nate Flicks Moo Reviews every other Monday. Nate joined forces back with his friends every Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Not every Monday, every other Monday yeah. when they decide to get together on Instagram at Nate Flicks Reviews. Ending action movie, guys, head over to our official website, www.geeksandflicks.com. You guys can check out all 300 episodes there. Once they are all available, merch will be coming soon. Like I said, in November, I have a lot of new designs there uh, for the t-shirts. And then Patreon. You guys can join the Patreon uh, also, Please. which is patreon.com slash geeks and flicks, which will give you access when you, all right, so 
I'll just do this quick. The $2 tier, for those of you out there, I think is the best deal. The $2 tier will give you access to all the Action Movie Guys podcast recordings a day early before it releases for you Action Movie Guys fans out there. And then you get to watch us behind the scenes if you guys want to. That's gonna I, I'm going to put the $2 tier, the Action Movie Guys tier. Yeah. You guys can hang out with us behind the scenes and everything. So that's the $2 tier. And then everything else... We have five, seven, and ten, and that's if you want a, more content with me and Nate. Or if you but, just um, want to support us yeah. more and help our dreams come true. That, <laughs> it helps. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, other than that, he's your host. Nate from Netflix Reviews. I'm his co-host, Alex Figueroa. Becklish, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, you got to do it again. Yes, you got to do it again. Nate yeah. scheduled us I'm for ready. 2027. Yeah, I got scheduled these. out all the way till the end of next year. Oh, no, the there end of go. 2025. So I'll have you take a look. Holy crap. Yeah. I'm the scheduler. Right, buddy. Yeah, you got you could do the Let's Scott go. and just pick like ten movies. Once you go through the list, just go. Beckish will be back. Oh, this one, <laughs> when these come out and she becomes I'll so popular, be, she'll be, be back. Stop. Went, oh my god, I'll who's be that happy girl's to come voice? Back. Who's that lady? She knows your stuff. <laughs> 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 you should add her. <laughs>